Okay, let's go ahead and put that 17 on there. All right. All right. Yeah, and the same technique with the tape. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Looking okay. Good. Looking good. That fits let's right see. down there. Might want to start just taping up there to seal it. All right. And then some of this, like, well, actually, the sanding block, you know, we'll uh -huh. sand a little bit later, you know, before we paint and all that. Just when we go back over So we're sanding again. kind of basically the glue, the dry glue yeah, off? Yeah, or? we just, not yet, though. It'll be, right. we're, we're a ways away from that, but, uh, okay. yeah, everything, it's, uh, we refine it. But now you've pretty much got your angle of attack. And you have your buoyancy and all that. Very good. Yeah. Very good. And the tape comes off the foam board a lot easier than it does the... Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay. And then let's go do that, um, that vertical, as I call it, that vertical taping across the ramway. Okay, so then there. I'm coming yeah. down here on the foam board. Uh, exactly. Uh -huh. Like I did earlier. Exactly. All right. Yeah, this year we had our first first grader ever. <laughs> that was amazing. To to uh, he built participate. One. Yeah, he he participated. Our first first grader going against high schoolers. Exactly. Huh. And you want to hear something funny? Yeah, sure. It was his boat that ran up on the island. His <laughs> boat was so fast, it went so far. Wow. I literally had to go get a boat to row out to the island and get it off the island. That's how fast it went. Of course, he had his mother was helping him, but uh, he was very interested. I think that bodes well for the future. Get a young kid like that interested in science, Absolutely. Like engineering, and math. You know, that's where that's where the future is. Is in this, and that's really the basis of this whole program: is science, technology, engineering, and math. So. Um, so I'm at this stage here. So I've got good. it. Let's let's check oh, it first. Check the scene. Yes, the, the same thing as well. Same thing. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back and check to make yeah. sure there's no gaps. No gaps. No sinking boats, no sinking hydroplanes. Okay. Very good. How much does weight play a role in it? It does play a role. Does it? It does. And what I've, over the many years I've been doing this, I've noticed that each boat is different, even though it's a kit. Mm -hmm. Each boat is different. Some boats, it works out the lighter the better. Some boats, actually, the heavier the better. So it just depends. And we, we learn that in the testing process. And we can put weights. I, I use like fishing weights. We actually play, place those certain uh, portions, uh, parts of the boat to kind of get it balances. Okay. Uh, all, again, it's, it goes back to critical thinking. And once a student understands the basics of aerodynamics and hydrodynamics and lift and thrust, they can kind of look at their boat and they have a pretty good idea of where they need to put weight. You okay. Know. Let me ask you, Dr. H.J., mm -hmm. what happens if a kid putting this together breaks this wing off or, or, or breaks that a little yeah. bit, then what? Do that's, we have to start about all over? Nope, that's the beauty of foam board. Okay. Just glue it back together. Okay, uh, glue it and then... We, we've had boats uh, hit, run ashore, rip apart. We've had even a person was out on a rowboat one time picking the boats up, hit the boat square. <laughs> okay. And we just went back to the pits, put it back together. So that's the nice thing about foam board as opposed to wood, things of this sort. It's uh, very easy to fix. All right, so as I look at this, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing any gaps, yep. um, so I guess we can just move on, to, move on. to putting at 19. And no gaps means, again, less weight, because you don't have to put putty on it. You don't I have see. to seal on it. I see. Very good. Yeah, let's move on. Okay. We're on page, let's go to page, uh, let's page see. nine, really? Yeah, let's do page nine. Yeah. All right. Very good. Now we're going to put, now we're beginning the, the, the sponsons. Okay. Okay. And this is going to be after the sponsons and the beginning of what we call the runner. When the boat is running up at full speed, <clears throat> the only parts that's going to touch the water are going to be the runners and the rudder. That's all that's going to touch the water when it's flying. So this very critical part of the boat we're going to put on now. So let's start with number 19. All right. And let's put it on the port side of the hull. Okay. So I'm going to apply glue uh -huh. basically to the bottom and a little bit to the side, exactly. is that what you, you would you, say? You see there's a gap there where you don't need to put glue right there. So there is gonna be a yeah. gap. Yeah, so you got okay, three quarters of the way up. Yeah, three quarters of the way up. So I'm just p applying it on the bottom. Uh -huh. and, and three quarters of the way up on the, on the side here. Just okay. Just right to there. So you're gonna wanna 
glue, glue a little bit there on the bottom and kind of push it right up. How come three quarters of the way up? Because it doesn't come all when you cut here. There's another. Oh, I see yeah. what you mean. And that's going to be your that's your, where your air trap begins right there. Okay. So you're actually beginning. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, you're tying off the air trap. Air so, traps are very complicated. So it will, way. even though it's smaller, but it's going to snug up. Oh yes, it will. Okay. And you're going to find that all of your frames are going to lean up against that piece right there. Okay. Okay. Very good. Like so. Okay, let's go ahead and put 20 on. Looking very good. That's going to be your base support. Same thing on 20 on the starboard side. Yeah. All right. Very good. And what are these called again? This that's, part of the that's the aft part of the sponson. The aft. Uh-huh. The back part of the sponson. Okay. Yep. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn to page 10. I'm going to show you how it's put on. Very good. Try to keep that 90 degree angle on the, see it's got 90 degree. Yeah, just make sure it's straight up. Oh, okay. I see Very what you good. mean. 90 degrees. It's very critical. All right. All right. Now, now we're going to get into 21 through 24. And this is actually, we're building here the runner and the actual angle of attack for the sponson. So this is very critical. So we're, again, all of this is working towards the air trap where we're going to actually, again, catch air between the sponsons all right. and the runner. And that's what we're putting together now. So these are the frames for that. I see. And 21. Very good. 21, we're going to put it right next Right on the inside. Just from looking right at on the, the inside. Yes. diagram. Yes. Okay, that makes that's sense. That's where it goes. And you notice how this, the top part's flat? Uh-huh. That's the runner. That's All right. what that is. So, yeah. So, um, on the bottom and on the back. And this really is a critical part of the boat because if there is a need to go back to the drawing board, this is usually where we have to go back, right here. Um, if it's not a 90 degree angle, it might pull it to the starboard side, it might pull it to the port side. In other words, it won't go straight. Part of qualifying to get into the regatta, the boat has to travel at least 100 feet and has to go straight. So that's very critical. When you understand that there are going to be five of the boats on the course with your boat, it's important that we go straight. <laughs> because just like in the real hydroplanes, when we don't go straight, we have accidents. When we have accidents, we're in the pit, in the pit area getting repaired. So. So this is helping steer the boat straight? Exactly. Okay. Yes, it supports or steady the, the boat. It's steady the boat. And we want to make sure it's, it's really at a 90 degree angle. Okay. And also put some glue on the inside there too. It's going to fit up against I that. I see. Very good. So you kind of see now how I the air trap. put glue on the inside of the other one. You so can do take that. it you, off. Yeah, you can do that real quick. Yeah. There you go. That's good. Can you visually see what I mean now by, can you see air catching up in here I now? Can. Yeah, you can see how it's catching up, yeah. Okay, yeah. I can see. Yeah, so the hull. All right. Very critical portion of your hydroplane. Yeah, very good. Squeeze a little glue in there. Yeah. Again, each hydroplane is different, even though it's the same kit, people put it together a little differently. And it's almost like they, help, they have their own personality, the hydroplanes, it's amazing. And uh, for your information, I've never predicted a winner yet. Okay. In over 30 years, I've never predicted a winner. So anyone can win. Very good. Okay, now the next two pieces you're going to put on are actually going to lay the foundation for the angle of attack of the sponsons. And what you're going to do is you're going to basically mimic what you've already put on. See this square right here? I do. Okay, you want to line it up right even with that square because we're going to put a couple pieces down there later. So, so number 23 lines right up with that point. Point to it again? Yes. Right, see this, this top right here? That's your runner. And you're going to support the runner, so you want to line it right up even with that so point like, right there. So like that? Exactly. And you also there and here in the front. That's what that's designed for. Very good. Okay. Now you have a very strong foundation for the sponsor. Again, that portion of the hydroplane is going to receive a lot of, shall we say, punishment because it's pushing up against the water. Every time it goes into the water, it's going to crash into the water. 
Okay, and imagine the force of that rocket pushing it forward and hitting the, the water. You want it to be very sturdy, and that's what's, what's going to give you that sturdiness. And again, you don't want the water pushing your boat around. You want your, your boat to control the water, and that's going to help you have that stability. Very good. Just move just, just inside there, just right. That's perfect. Perfect. Very good. Now you can do the same thing with 24. Looks like we're building a pretty fast boat here. Hope so. All right. We'll see. <laughs> you can use the race against your students there, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be building one with them. Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good. Now. Very good. How's that looking? Looking very good. Okay. Doesn't look like a hydroplane there. At least the, at least the hull. And now how, gonna, how long would you say we need to let this sit so it can dry? We can do know? it right now. Matter of fact, we can. Okay, so yeah, we, we can, can move right on. Right now, let's move on. Let's right. move on to parts 25 and 26. Let's go ahead and turn the page. Okay, let's get going. These are just right, the page ports. 11. Mm -hmm. And 25 and 26. What they're going to do is they're going to round off the structure for the runner. Okay, and to describe the runner, it's one of the few parts of the boat that's going to be actually touching the water. And it's only about one square inch by one square inch on these hydroplanes. So 25 and 26 are going to shore up the foundation to put the runner on top of there. All right. And that's what that's for.